Well, Pesach's coming up, and Art Scroll is filled with uh, a Pesach collection. Um, each year you're always releasing more and more to your collection from your first year of your original um, collection. You've done um, your original Haggadahs, and this year you put out, I think, two, two, new, two or three new uh, pieces. Tell us about what you've put out this year. Well, this year we put out um, two, two new Haggadahs. One of them, Rav Nebensel. You may have heard of, he's the Rav of the Altstadt, the old city in Yerushalayim. A Talmud Muvik of uh, Rav Shlomo Zalman Arabach. And um, there's several volumes in Hebrew of his, uh, of his uh, lectures, or Shmus, and whatever you want to call it, on Chumash, and on, uh, on the Parshish, and on Yamim Tovim. He did a Haggadah too, which we did this year, translation, he has his, in addition to his commentaries, and the halachas, his, his, his Hilchis Pesach, there's also a collection of essays that he wrote on the inyanim of Pesach. The significance, the lessons, discussion of the miracles, the discussion of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim in general, gratitude, humility and greatness in one place, how, the, uh, how this is illustrated in the story of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim in the Chumash and in the Haggadah. It's a very, very nice piece of work which was written by a, a really great man, one of the truly outstanding Rabbanim of our time. So this is one new release. What else have we put out this year? This year we're distributing for Rabbiana Weinrib, who was a uh, Talmud Chacham, an oh, artist. Turn around so the camera can see a little bit. Let me find the page that you really, you really ought to see. Kriyas Yamsuf. Kriyas Yamsuf. Here's uh, the yam being split into sections, and Klal Yisrael, the people, people walking through it. And you have the da for the 12 parts. Uh, the 12 <laughs> parts, all 12 parts. And here are the 50 miracles at the Yamsuf. First an introduction, witnessing God's hand in nature. That's really interesting. A lot of times you go through the Haggadah and you read about 50 miracles here, 250 miracles. To have them listed right there and in the Haggadah. Here they are, a list, a list from, one, from 1 to 50. Pull out pages, and um, here the illustration. The whole thing is illustration is is illustrated, and it's really beautiful. And I'm very happy that we have been able to distribute for Rabbiana Weinrib. He's a good friend of mine. I have enormous respect for him, and it's unusual that you have someone with so much artistic skill and literary skill who's able to put together something like this. He's, um, it's, it's too heavy for me to, to pull down, but uh, let me shut it off for a minute. Let me get it, okay? You know, this has got to be the biggest book I've ever seen. Probably, probably. I, this I, was I, I, I haven't even, let me see what this weighs here. I'm holding this now. This is, this is well into... 30, 40 plus pounds. It's got to be the heaviest uh, Sefer I've ever held. This is hand done by Yana Weinrub, Sefer Schmeiss, and every single, every single Pusik translated, and he has his own commentary, illustrated all the way through. It was done originally as, as a custom piece for somebody, and um, it's not cheap, but it's very, I, it's very I, I well. I imagine this is a good couple hundred dollars. It's very, yeah. I, I don't know the price, frankly, but uh, it's a beautiful piece of work, and it's, uh, if you want to give a very special gift to somebody. Uh, this probably would be one of them, if they can pick it up. If they can pick it up. <laughs> or, or if they have servants who can pick it up. Yes. I guess if you're giving this as a gift, uh, it's definitely going to be uh, a little bit of a... Uh, Price range. Here's the original Elias Haggadah that I mentioned. You notice all of our Haggadahs are shrink wrapped because you don't want somebody, not you don't want somebody, most people don't want to take a Haggadah and put it on their dining room table and then what happens when Pesach comes. So, the doctor so, make a point so they, want it, they want it shrink wrapped so that they can put it down and not worry about chametz. That's a very innovative idea over there to make sure that your, your farm are, are Pesach ready. Mm -hmm. 
And here's the Art Scroll Children's Haggadah. For really, for, for very young children. It's a very simplified translation. It's not a literal translation because you don't want to confuse children. You want them to be able to read it. And as you can see, it's very liberally illustrated. Hirdam va'esh v'simre soshan. Blood, fire, and columns of smoke. Blood, fire, smoke, lightning. You know, if, if I may say so, my father's personal favorite Haggadah, the one you're holding right now. He happens to like your uh, Brachos one as well. It's not just kids, it can be for anybody uh, of all ages. These, these, these Haggadahs, sometimes, sometimes simplicity is uh, the best. Yeah, that's true. One of the... Uh one of our original ideas when we first started, as I mentioned before, Megillus Esther, to make it easy reading. And that's the name Art Scroll. Art Scroll is well, most, most a, a of our, scroll of art. Yeah, but most of our things now are not easy reading anymore. For Gemara, you, you have to concentrate. You However... Know, I, I used to joke, uh, it really isn't a joke, but it, 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 it's actually reality, that I gained more of my English vocabulary probably from learning your Gemara than I did from English class. I'll tell you an interesting story. I was once, it was a Cholomoyed. I was visiting Rabbi Yankov Kamenetsky's at Sal in, uh, in Muncie. And there were many people there. And, and uh, the Rav of Square Town came in. Rav Neuschloss, Sichrein Levrocha. And, um, and they were speaking, and Rav Neuschloss said people come to ask him Shilas. They, don't, they hardly speak Yiddish, and he hardly speaks English. And sometimes he feels it's hard for him to pass in a Shiloh because they don't understand each other. So he <laughs> happened to have a copy of the uh, Art School Mishnayis on the table. And he picked it up and handed it to him, and he said, here, learn English from this. Itaka, you can learn the whole, the, the vocabulary over there is very, very well written and it's very um, it's high, high, high level English, shall we say. Yeah, well, Rev Gifter told us from the very start. Um, Rev Gifter came in after the second Art Scroll Safer and he wrote us. He wrote to us, said he, uh, he read it and he's very impressed and he encourages us to continue. So Rabbi Zlatowicz and I flew out to Cleveland. And we had lunch with him. And he urged us, he said, keep the language, keep the language on a high level. Don't say Bereshis, say Genesis. Don't say Shmai, say Exodus. Because B'nai Torah would be put off by it, but they'll get used to it. They'll get used to it. On the other hand, modern people, if they see all these, all these Yiddish, these Hebrew expressions, they'll feel, oh, it's not for them. You know, this is too black hat for them. Mm -hmm. So produce it in such a way that someone who's, who is searching, who's not yet from... Let, let it literally come in into Yiddishkeit, can take, that's take, right. take, take, pick up the Talmud and, and learn the Talmud and, and feel like they're connected to it. That's right. So When we, uh, not long after, the, after our Talmud started, a couple of years after the Talmud started, uh, we got a call, somebody called up and said he has a question. And the original editor of the Talmud, Rav Herschel Goldworm, was, happened to be in the office then. And the call was given to him, and the man asked him the question. He said, it's a very good question. Reb Kiva Eger asked that question, and he told him where he can find it. And he said, you don't understand, Rabbi. I don't read Hebrew. And this man was learning Gemara. I just saw a uh, letter when I came in over here. I was on tape to your the coat closet in the art school building here, mm -hmm. which was somebody writing that they uh, think that they didn't know Hebrew at all, they didn't know anything, and they started learning the more daily. And they were just writing to you that uh, they appreciate your work because they're now finishing the entire Shas after seven or eight years mm -hmm. from you know your availability. You know, we get letters like this all the time. That, that obviously, just, obviously has got to be a very uh, lot of novels to you when you read these letters. I got um, I got a bar, a bar mitzvah invitation last week. A boy in Los Angeles said that he's making for his bar mitzvah. He's finishing making a siyum on Shisha Sidre Mishnah, and most of it he learned on the telephone. I used to record for Eli Teitelbaum. Mishnayis, <clears throat> about eighty percent of uh, of the Mishnah in Dailish year. About 80% of the, of the Mishnah was uh, what I recorded for him. And here's a boy who said that he learned Mishnayis 
from my, from my tapes. You know, they're people, who, they're people who are anxious to learn. Just give them the tools, make it possible for them to learn. And as soon as you do that, they're, they're in. Yeah, one of the nicest things that we hear from time to time is somebody says, he started learning the Artsko Gemara from the English, and little by little he, he, he learned to understand the Hebrew, and now he learns, now he learns, the, the, he learns from, the, from the Hebrew Gemara, and he refers to the English when he has a problem. That's a very gratifying thing. That means you, you really accomplished something. Somebody's sound very, very far.